Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 We have the, uh, the Travelling Gone Oscars is the tonight's band, uh, the Travelling Wilburys. Um, so that was Sarada. So thank you, Sarada. And uh, Radhika is going to take us in a tune now. So we're celebrating something special, but we just can't tell you what it is. That's why they, that's why they're here, staying with us tonight.
it has the temperature for everyone. Is it? It's about right. Yeah. Yep. Made no too many complaints. Great. How many? Uh, how many made it to the Kyoto under the stars last night? It was a bunch of you. Okay. Pretty nice, huh? Don't, don't forget, you can revisit these on YouTube as well. YouTube and Facebook. So if you want to revisit it or you want to share it with someone or just have it in the background sometimes, you can go to the Mantra Room Gold Coast and you can replay that wonderful evening. So this is a uh, time we have to speak a little bit about the foundation of yoga, uh, what's behind it, what's the purpose of it, what the benefits of it are, how it relates to our life. So these are the things we, uh, we generally talk about. Uh, but as some of you know, in the last few weeks, months, a friend of ours has been asking a question and uh, this week we've we finally got to it. I think it's been, has it been about six months or something since you asked the first time. So before speaking, uh, let me take a moment to pay my uh, respects and gratitude to my spiritual teacher, to all of the sages who have given us this, this supreme knowledge, and to the supreme soul. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prestaya Bhutale. Srimati Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa Iti Namine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunichananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Go Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So maybe a little bit of, before getting to the actual question, a little bit of background. It's to do with, the question is to do with uh, specifically the mantra that we finish every evening with, whether it be our Friday uh, kirtan or tonight, Sundays and Wednesday with Yadu and friends. There's a particular longer mantra that we finish all of our evenings with. Um, of course, you'll get to experience it tonight. But it, it starts with Namaste Narasringaya. Pralada Lada Dayane, and it goes on from there for many, many lines. So I think most of you who've been coming at all would have at least heard it. So the question was, what's it for? What's it mean? What's it about? And why do we do it? And they're all, they're all good questions. So first, maybe I'll speak a little bit about mantra. Um, mantra in the yoga tradition means transcendental sound. The word mantra. Uh, you know, which we've kind of incorporated into our English language. If someone repeats something a lot, you know, some company or someone just got a particular thing, you know, that they keep repeating, we actually call it a mantra, right? So even in, in our common day-to-day -day cultural English language, we talk about mantra. Mantra uh, comes from the Sanskrit term. Sanskrit is uh, ancient language. Actually, many... Um, experts consider it to be the mother tongue of all other languages. That you'll find there are elements of Sanskrit in every single language on the planet. So some people describe that Sanskrit is the mother language of all languages. Um, for instance, in this word mantra, mantra, not, uh, not mantra, just if I can just kind of sort that one out to start with. In Australia we say mantra. That's okay, it's our accent, but it's mantra. So there's actually two parts to this word mantra. Uh, man, the root of the word man, as in mantra, speaks of the mind, talks about the mind. And tra means to, mantra, tra means to deliver or to, to take out of the mundane and bring to the transcendent. So a mantra is a spiritual sound. It's not just a, a hypnotic repetition. Like, you know, sometimes people speak about, well, you know, you can make up your own mantra. You can use any sound. And I remember when I first began exploring meditation, you know, um, back in the deep, dark 60s and 70s, you know, there were some people talking about, well, you can just say one, just repeat one. That's just as good as any mantra. So you can go, you know, you can imagine tonight if we just sung one, like every single one of the tunes, you know, different melodies, but it's, Man, one, 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 one. I mean, it'd make it easy. We don't need to have, you know, mantra sheets or, you know, you can pick it up really quickly if it's just one. 
But I can guarantee you of one thing, that you wouldn't keep coming back. No matter how beautiful the singer is, no matter how nicely and how tastefully the players play, if all we sang was one, 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 every single Sunday for two hours, I'm pretty sure numbers would dwindle quite badly. It's even like that if you pick any song. Let's say you pick, I don't know, Stairway to Heaven. You know the song by Led Zeppelin, right? You know that's banned in all music shops. When someone goes in to buy a guitar, no one is allowed to play Stairway to Heaven because that's one of the first little bit of complicated music that people who are learning guitar, they want to show off, they'll play Stairway to Heaven. So that's banned from all music guitar shops. So let's say we were singing Stairway to Heaven. Nice song, beautiful melody, beautiful playing. And that's it. That's all we did every single Sunday was Stairway to Heaven. Nothing else, just that. Again, it's nice. You know, we might like it, but it doesn't hold us for very long. So the first thing is that, no, not any sound can be an actual mantra. Mundane sound, material sound vibrations are like anything perishable, like bread. Bread has a use-by date, and then it becomes stale, right? And when it's stale, you don't want to eat it, because there's no flavor, and it's actually quite yucky. Everything's like that. Everything made of matter, everything material has a use-by date. It's, it's, my spiritual teacher describes it as being like chewing the chewed. Material sound or material experiences, when you do them over and over again, it's like chewing the chewed. Now, I don't, know, I don't notice too many people eating chewing gum these days. I know people do. But if you go to the States or somewhere like that, every person is chewing gum, right? Everyone's walking around chewing gum. So let's say someone's been chewing gum for a while, and they kind of take it out, and they, you know, they put it on their table. And then you know, the next day, they pick that piece of chewing gum up, and they're chewing it again. And you know, they put it on the table, and the next day, they come back and pick up that piece again and chew it. Then. The, there was a song, this is to tell you how old I am. There was a song when I was a kid called Has the Chewing Gum Lost Its Flavor on the Bedpost Overnight? How, see, this is why Bob Dylan came along, because that was the lyrics and that was the level of music that was going on before you know, the, the 60s kind of music style. How's that for a, for a title of a song? Has your chewing gum lost its flavor on the bedpost overnight? Come on, be honest, who's, who's heard of it? Well, oh, okay, far out. Excellent. So, so that's the nature of material experiences, sounds. They, you chew it for a while, it loses its flavor, and you have to get a new flavor, right? Or a new piece or something like that. So no, not any sound. You can make up any sound, and it will have the same effect as a mantra. Mantras are actually sp are special. Why? Because they are of a different nature. They are of a spiritual nature. Like even on our programs here, there are limited mantras that we use. You know, there's quite a few, but, you know, Hare Krishna Rama, that's three. Gopala Govinda, well, we already use Rama, so that's like five. So, you know, if you add them up, we probably use a total of about, I don't know, ten mantras, ten different mantras. And it goes on for hours and hours, weeks and weeks, months and months, years and years, decades. And for some reason, we don't get tired of them. For some reason, they actually become more and more attractive. They actually become sweeter and sweeter. The more that you hear them, the more that you chant them, the more you sing them, and the more you meditate on them. They don't lose their flavor. They don't have a use-by date. In fact, in the beginning, we're just accessing on a very surface level what is actually there in, in a mantra. So the mantras purify the heart of all the troubles and purifies the mind of all the worries. But more than that, it actually takes us to our real self. We come to realize our real nature as spiritual beings because of the purification of these transcendental or spiritual sound vibrations, they have this effect. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is one of the teachers in our spiritual lineage. 
also describes that these divine names, these mantras which connect us to the divine, they give us a taste for that happiness, the nectar for which we are always anxious. Everybody is looking for some happiness. Everybody is looking for joy. We're looking for shelter. We're looking for peace. Right? These are, you know, this is universal to every single country, uh, any demographic you want to talk about. This is a universal desire that everybody has. Joy, peace, happiness, shelter. Yeah? Who doesn't want those things? Right? If someone says, no, nah, no, nah, I want chaos, I want arguments, I want fighting, I want you know, stress, I'd like some anxiety, please. No, no one's looking for that. So this is where it's to be found. So that's just a little bit. This is what a nature of mantra is. Now, there are also different mantras that, like the, these mantras, Gopala, Govinda, Krishna, Rama, these are actually names of the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Soul, the Supreme Person, has unlimited hundreds and millions of names, like Krishna, Govinda, etc. And again, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes that the Supreme Person has invested all spiritual potency in these holy names. And there is no difference between the name of the Supreme and the Supreme. So the mantras or names of the Supreme are not just representations of God or of the Supreme. They are non-different because they are of the absolute spiritual potency in nature. So the Supreme Person is present in these names, fully, completely. So that's why we sing them and we don't get tired of them. In fact, we go deeper and deeper. They take us beyond the physical plane. They take us be beyond the mental and intellectual plane. And they actually bring us to the plane of the soul, to that spiritual or transcendental reality. So that's a general idea about mantras. And that's why we sing them. And that's why they have the effect that they do. So specifically, um, the question is about this long mantra at the, uh, at the end of our gatherings. So I'll say something even before I get to that. So you'll also notice that we start most of our gatherings with also longer mantras. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prestaya Bhutale, Srimati Siddha Swarupananda, Paramahamsa Iti Namine. Then we say, Bhaja Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Garadha, Shiva Sadi Go Bhakta Vrindam. So what do these ones mean also? So the first, it's called Pranam. Pranam means uh, paying respects, uh, paying one's gratitude to one's spiritual lineage, to one's personal, you know, spiritual teacher, and to the spiritual lineage in which these teachings and these mantras have been handed down. So therefore, you know, what we're trying to do here is not simply, you know, read a book, make something up, add a bit of this, add a bit of spike, you know, add a bit of cayenne pepper, and we stir it around and we come up with something that we think is interesting. My goal and our goal when we do what we're doing is to actually not give our opinion on anything because my opinion and thoughts are not superior to anyone else's. I have the same, you know, shortcomings and weaknesses and that, every, that we all have, right? That we're not perfect. So why I pay my respects, why we pay our respects, we're actually praying to our spiritual teachers and to the Supreme Person. Please let me pass on something of this gift that I have been given, that you have kindly given me. As it has helped me, Please allow me to somehow or other communicate this in a way that may be of benefit to others. So this is what the pranams mean. It's like respect, uh, expressing one's gratitude and one's deep felt prayer and humility that I'm, you know, like I'm not qualified to speak in any way, you know. I'm an idiot personally. You can ask anyone who knows me. <laughs> but the reason why I can speak and why I do is because it's not about me and what I know or don't know. I am simply trying to be a messenger, so to speak, of the wisdom that I've received from my teachers. It's as simple as that. So therefore, I don't have to try and do something magical or say something that you've never heard before, although 
I'm sure there will be things. So therefore, that's what I'm trying to do, and that's what that pranam, by, you know, nama om vishnu padaya. So this is paying respects to my spiritual teacher, uh, Srila Siddhas Rupananda Paramahamsa, which also includes his teacher and his teacher, and in this spiritual lineage, which goes back and begins with Krishna, the Supreme Personality. So that's what that one is for. So we're, we're paying respects and uh, with a feeling of gratitude that we've been given this, this gift of yoga. So is that helpful? So that's what we're doing. The, the next, the Bhajya Sri Krishna Chaitanya is also similar. We are paying our respects, our gratitude, um, in all humility to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Nichananda Prabhu. These are great transcendental personalities who have delivered these holy names of the Supreme uh, to us. Uh, so we are paying our deep respects to these transcendental personalities. So that's what those ones and why, why we are doing it. So I won't go through the whole mantra that we do at the end because uh, I'm sure, like I said, most of you know it and, um, and we'll be doing it tonight. But just understand it's quite long. And uh, so why, why do we finish with that? Why do we sing that? Is there a purpose behind it? Is there some outcome? You know, what does it mean? So this, this mantra is a mantra of protection. So we're actually, again, paying our respects, our gratitude, and a prayerful way we're actually trying to surrender our life to the Supreme Protector, to the Supreme Person. That's, that's the essence of what this prayer or this mantra is. So we're not just talking about protecting me from COVID, you know, protecting me from my husband, protecting me from my wife, from my kids. No, or protecting me that, you know, I'm not going to get a flat tire on the way home. No, it, it's a, a much deeper protection that we're asking for, we're praying for. We're trying to take shelter in the Supreme from the problems and the troubles of life. I don't know if anyone's noticed that there are some problems in life. Has anyone picked up on that yet? And there are some anxieties and worries and fears and all kinds of things that, that we're trying to find shelter from. Now, if we, if we don't have a spiritual inclination, then we look for that shelter in various external activities, you know, which we've spoken about many times. We, we look for shelter in these things. But of course, we don't find it. If you notice that, you know, I mean, you know, apart from getting sore thumbs and getting short-sighted because the screen's so small and we hold it so close, what we're actually doing, other than when we're texting a friend or a family member, uh, is looking for shelter. That's actually what we're doing. We want shelter from worries, anxieties. We want shelter from loneliness, all kind of things, fears. Worries. We're looking for shelter, actually. Peace. And from shelter comes peace. From peace comes joy. Because without peace, there cannot be happiness, right? You can have everything and everyone you need, but if you're not peaceful, if you don't have peace within your mind and your heart, the so-called happiness doesn't exist. So we're looking for that. But it is not to be found in these things. Not unless you can listen to the mantras on them. That's why we can find peace with these things if you tune in you know, to one of our, you know, kirtan sessions, then yes, you can find peace, harmony, all the things you're looking for in one of these. You know, of course, where else do we look for peace and shelter? Uh, what's it called? BWS, right? BWS, you'll know what that means, right? It's a shop, beer, wines, and spirit. And we go in there and we're going, can I please have a bottle of um, forgetfulness, thanks? A uh, large one. A nice, I'll have a six-pack of forgetfulness, please. Because that's what alcohol actually means. You know, the reason why we have more than one glass, you know, if you're just thirsty, oh, I'll have a glass. But we tend to, you know, buy six-packs, we buy slabs. Is that what they're called? It's been a while since I've drunk. I think they're called slabs. That's, <laughs> that's like when you go to certain fast food restaurants, they're called buckets. I'd like a bucket of... Anyway, that's a, that's a detour. <laughs> um, I better cut to the chase because we do want to have shelter. We do want to have more chanting. So um, 
Let me just read a little bit. It's That's not it. Gee, I didn't bring it. No, that's a personal joke. So this is called the Namaste prayers or Srina Shringa Pranams. Again, Pranams means paying respects, gratitude. And the Shringa is one of the names of the Supreme. So Namaste Nara Shringaya. And Shringaya means Krishna or God, one of the names of the Supreme. So offering our respects. So the words of this prayer that we sing at the end of our kirtan programs, these wonderful prayers are a calling out of the heart for protection and shelter from the Supreme. So this is, you know, Bhaktivedanta Swami, who is my teacher's teacher, said this chanting, this sincere chanting, is just like a child who is calling out for her mother. You know, there's different kind of cries that kids do, right? There's whingy, whiny, I want some, you know, I'm not gonna annoy you cries. But a parent can tell when the, when the child is actually in distress. You know, even if the mum's doing something in the kitchen or the dad and, and the kid's in a bounce set on the, you know, in, the, in the lounge, the parent knows the child and they can whinge and cry a little bit and the parent doesn't bother. You know, they're okay. But there's a certain kind of crying that they do and the parent immediately runs to see what's wrong, yeah? So the parent knows. So similarly, when we, the spirit soul, who are, have an eternal bond of love, of kinship with the supreme soul, we, if we are fortunate, we are touched by the anxieties, the worries, the problems, the fears and anxieties of our journey through this world. And we come to the realization that nothing that I have tried has given me the, the shelter that I actually need as a spirit soul, which means my relationship with the supreme soul that one of love that relationship of love then we cry out for that love and, and for that shelter and that protection just like the child when she realizes she needs her mother or a parent so this chant is, a, is of that mood there comes a point in everyone's life where we experience our vulnerability and limitations there are things in life that are beyond our control, beyond our ability to do anything about. In that situation, it is natural to think that the situation may be hopeless. But in fact, if we, actually prayerf if we are actually prayerful to the Supreme Person, to the Supreme Soul, then it is not hopeless. We don't experience that hopelessness. We experience there is actually hope. We simply need to pray, my dear Lord, please protect me. Please take care of me. I don't have the power to do what needs to be done. This is the feeling of the person when they are trying to take shelter in their relationship with the Supreme. These beautiful prayers are an expression of our need for protection and the Supreme Lord's desire to give us loving protection. So it is a two-way exchange relationship we as part of the supreme we are desiring actual spiritual protection and the supreme person who we are children of so to speak is lovingly offering us protection so this pranams at the end of the night is the expression of the us the individual soul the part of god expressing our desire please give me shelter Please let me take shelter in your love for me. And the Supreme Soul reciprocating lovingly, who is actually wanting to and waiting for us to turn to him to give us that shelter that we want in our existence. So that's the brief. You know, I could give you a word by word translation, but it was not the same as actually giving the meaning, the, you know, the feeling that's behind it. Is that okay? Thank you very much for asking. Okay, that's it. Let's chant. <laughs> Hooky dooky. So, you playing Sid? Bass? Mr. Bass Man or whatever? Wayne will sort you out. 
So we're going to stand up because we've got sore bums. So if you'd like to stand up as well, you're very welcome. And uh, my dear friend Yoda Nandanas will chant with us and uh, then we'll do some together. Where's, we need some singers. Where's, it, where's our singers? We could have a couple of singers. Radhika. They know I'm going to find your show. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
If you want to hear the second part, you have to come on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> I know the lyrics. <laughs> So we're celebrating our reunion this while we're doing it tonight. <laughs> you shouldn't laugh. People being separated at birth is not a small thing. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw a chain together. Reunion.
Happy birthday to us. It's happy birthday to us. It's actually Yavin Hamdana's birthday. That was a secret, I'm not, don't tell anyone. I just thought I'd pass it on to you guys. So we'll wrap up with uh, one from Manzalila, yeah? Hope you remember her? It's been a while. Please come up, Manzalila, and sing us a tune. I was worth coming tonight, eh? Great talk. Excellent chanting. Okay, food.
that forward. Thank you very, very much for the wonderful chanting. And to those of us who, to those of us, those of you who joined us online, thank you very much for being here with us and chanting along. And uh, can we all just um, wish Yadinadana a happy birthday by way of acclamation. Haribo. Two years younger than me. Uh, two, no, two minutes. Sorry, two minutes younger than me. You're giving too much away there. Oh, no. <laughs> and of course, it was also his family and friends who were chanting and playing tonight. The three daughters. So if you loved it and you want to hear more, he chants every Wednesday night here at 7 p.m. Please come and fill the room with uh, beautiful sound. So the usual announcements. Please stay seated. We will bring you your meal. Don't crowd the kitchen. It makes them anxious. <laughs> um, if you have a special requirement, just let the servers know and they can help you. If you can help us with a donation, we have a cash box and Taff and Pay and FPOS. If you want to leave a really big donation, that's fine as well. <laughs> and um, if you can please help us to pack this whole beautiful chanting space away to make a yoga studio for tomorrow morning for our eager yogis who get here nice and early and need a nice clean space to practice in. That would be very much appreciated. Who's heading pack down tonight? I can see a hand. Emily. Emily. So if you need a job, come and see Emily and she can help you out. There she is. So if you're, a job, if you're a job seeker, she's our centre link. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you get paid, you get like credit into your spiritual bank account. It's so true. It's all it's true. It's very true. So thank you so much. Hari Bowl. And um, just a reminder, if you want to watch again, like I said, YouTube or Facebook, you can watch all of this again, plus past ones, because if you haven't been here for all of them, you've missed out on something great. So they're all archived on our, on our YouTube channel, The Mantra Room Gold Coast.